Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish. Our scripture readings today remind us that God knows us perfectly, even before we were formed in the womb of our mother. We are also reminded that we can become strong, like a pillar of iron, and that strength comes from God in his love. We pray today that we may learn to be able to recognize the Christ when he comes to us and not reject him, as did the people of his hometown of Nazareth and the members of his own synagogue. Our gathering song this morning is number 302, Gather Us In, Please Stand. Here in this place, the light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face, our fears and our dreamings, brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Sometimes we try to find ourselves, and the way to do that, of course, is to find God in our life and his gifts. At the beginning of prayer, beginning of worship, we ask for the gift, forgiveness, and mercy, that acknowledging our need to receive them, our hearts are open to give them to those in need. We take a moment. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, to God in the highest and on and earth, earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. Will. We, we praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we, adore you, we, we glorify you, you we, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly, Heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. prayer. You are seated at the right, at the right hand, hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray that we find Christ. We allow Christ to find us. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Father, I forgot to do this. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass, against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people, they will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially, 
but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, surely you will quote me this proverb, physician, cure yourself and say, do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through their midst and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Sorry, uh, I don't know where she went. I forgot that an automatic pilot, I don't get everything done in the morning, it's too early. <laughs> sometimes I, I set up on uh, Saturday evenings for Mass and sometimes on Sunday mornings and sometimes I, I miss a few things, okay? Well, that's a good way to start. Folks, uh, you know in our society there's uh, oh a lot of things that are, we're moving so fast technologically uh, that we can kind of get overwhelmed 
And you can take it any way you want to take it, you know, different kinds of things. But I'm just going to talk about one today. And this is something that has kind of exploded probably over the last few years. Since most people, almost everybody, carries around a cell phone. And, uh, and that is the idea of taking selfies, okay? Selfies. And uh, anyway, last, uh, I think it was in Chelsea. No, it was in the Hispanic Mass. And I don't know if people did this in Belle Plaine. I didn't hang around very long, but so after Mass, some people were selling, were showing their selfies, and I thought, ooh, <laughs> how to put the fear of the Lord into you, right? Okay. Now, not only uh, do they take selfies, but they sell, as you may know, selfie sticks. Because if you do the picture like this, you can only probably get your own face. But if you get a selfie stick, then you can get maybe two or three people or, you know, a couple or a group of friends. And folks, uh, again, uh, our, our legal system lags behind the changes in technology in lots of different ways. But they're starting to put laws in about selfie sticks. For example, now, for obvious reasons, you cannot have, use a selfie stick on an airplane. Can you imagine? <laughs> if most of us have flown. Can you imagine that thing going around, you know, and the turbulence? And I've been told you're not allowed to take them to Disneyland, or again, not to use them in Disneyland. And I'm sure uh, next summer, I don't know what they did last summer, but State Fair, County Fair, they won't allow you to take a selfie stick on a ride because, you know, some of those rides are like, you know, like this. So, uh, again, uh, as technology and as things develop, they have to kind of come up with new rules. And I did a little checking on this, folks. Uh, there, there's a growing, uh, sadly, there's a growing tendency. And again, we, we, we tend to overdo things in our, our world. We all do a little bit, I suppose. But there's a tendency to want to take a selfie doing something that's kind of uh, impressive or dangerous. Uh, I said in Belle Plaine, I guess you could say it here. There were two guys, I won't go very far with this, but there were two guys who wanted to take a selfie with a train coming at them from behind. Oh. Well, they took the picture, but the train got them, okay? Oh. So, and there's, there's things like that every month now. And again, you know, the things of this world, and this is why it's so important to have our faith and, the, you know, the example of our Lord, the teaching of the church. You know, there's so many good things that can become bad. And even something like selfie and selfie sticks can, can and it's kind of a sign, you know, that uh, selfies, again, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm sure it's fun at a party, <laughs> things like that. But it kind of shows that centeredness on self. Someone said last night after the Hispanic Mass, I w what was wrong with asking people to take a picture of you, you know, in front of Mount Rushmore or something like that? But we, we just want to do it ourselves. So, and you know, folks, uh, there's a there's a Greek, ancient Greek saying, there's a whole bunch of them, of course, and I don't know how much you know about Greece, but uh, there was this famous oracle, like a prophet kind of, at Delphi, and then they, they had these proverbs, sayings, maxims, whatever you want to call it, ca carved on the wall. And the number one, what, number one in Greek thought, and Joe and I had a discussion about this because some say Soc Socrates wrote it, someone said this, that. They have no idea. But it said, know thyself. Know thyself. And that, I think, is something that uh, is a sign of wisdom. If we know ourselves, know ourself. But for believers, I think it goes, I, I don't think it's enough. I mean, Christ came for a reason, right? Christ became because what we had before him was not enough. Not even the wisdom of Greek philosophy or any other kind of philosophy. And we believe, we believe that the way to know ourself is not the selfie, but is to know our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, right? And, and folks, you know, God knows us. God knows us. And we want to know ourselves as God knows us. In, in I think it was the first reading, it said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. Now, folks, that's, that's a pretty powerful statement. God, who we believe by faith is all-knowing, from the beginning of time, and God is be before time, of course, 
God knew each one of us before we were conceived. And also, when we saw the light of day, birth, God had dedicated us to his purpose. That is why we baptize children, ideally, soon after birth. Because we believe every one of us, you know, we don't exactly, we're trying to figure it out, right? We're trying to figure it out. It says, at present we see indistinctly as in a mirror. Now in heaven, we will see face to face. So we try to figure it out. But our purpose in life is not to do just what I think I want to do right now to be happy. But our purpose is to discover what is my dedication from God? How is he calling me to manifest the face of Christ, the goodness of Christ, the compassion of Christ in the life where I am, where I live in my community? Now folks, this is, a, this is a lifelong task. That's why we're given a lifetime, some short, some long. But I would suggest that it might be a little more difficult. I'm not saying it's hard, but I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> It, I'm just saying that we have to be cautious when we think we have life figured out. Gospel. Who would have known Jesus best outside of Mary and Joseph and God, and God the Father, of course, and the Holy Spirit? Well, you would think, right? We would think, and we live in a small town too, right? Small town. We would think that those who had been with Jesus from boyhood to manhood possibly 30 years, 25, 30 years, in Nazareth, in Nazareth, would have known him best. Ironically, folks, ironically, those who knew him best knew him least. And we heard the ending of the gospel. You know, he got up there, he's, he's in the synagogue, which he was allowed to do every once in a while, like we have lectures here. He read, he read from Isaiah, and he said, today this passage is fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, he was saying, folks, he was kind of saying, the one you've been waiting for, the Messiah you've been praying for thousands of years, it's in all your Psalms, it's in all the prophets. He is here before you now, the Messiah, the Son of God, your Savior. And what did they want? They wanted the carnival show. They wanted signs and wonders. They wanted cool things they could talk about with their friends. They wanted to see a, some kind of miracle, a miracle. Now folks, there's nothing wrong with signs and wonders, but when you have the Son of God, you've got a lot more than signs and wonders and carnival shows and consumer shopping stuff that we might want. The Lord was saying, you have folks what you have been praying for, and what did they do? They got, excuse my French, they got mad as hell, <laughs> and they rose up, drove him out of the town, led him to the hill to hurl him down headlong. They were angry because they really, really did not either want the Messiah or did not want the Messiah that he was or could, were, it was impossible for them to recognize him because he had lived in their midst. And so he walked through their midst and went away. Now that's one side. The other side to reflect about is who recognized Jesus and who did not? And, you know, the first people that re rejected him were the people in the synagogue, church people, right? And priests, high priests especially, scribes and Pharisees, powerful people, powerful people like the Romans, wealthy people in probably most cases rejected him. And the ones who recognized him were the broken ones, the, the ones who knew they were sinners, who were slaves, who were poor, who were slobs, who were lepers, who were prostitutes, who were broken, who were blind, who were deaf, who were injured, who were dying, who were old, and all the rest. So it, folks, it's very interesting. You know, we all want to be successful in life, but I think our definition of success has to be formed by our faith. And success is knowing, knowing Jesus, and knowing that we are known by him. And from that relationship, forming an idea, checks and balances, we, we, we fail sometimes, we have to kind of figure it out over time, forming an idea, the purpose, the real purpose of our life, which may not look good in the newspaper, but I'll tell you, in every parish, in every community, there are people that are not noticed 
that do far more than, than the ones who get their name in the paper, you would be surprised. And I would be surprised because I don't know, I'm sure I don't know 2% of them. There are so many acts of goodness and kindness. Now, now how do we get to know Jesus? Well, this is just really, <clears throat> I'm going to grab my water here. I would say uh, common sense, right? How do you get to know a friend? How do you get to, to know a spouse? Think of one maybe before you were married. How do you get to know a kid? How do you get to know a, a grandkid, uh, a parent, a grandparent, your neighbor, your workplace? Common sense, what would we do? We'd go for a walk. <laughs> I, was, I was telling on Belle Plain, I used to love going for walks you know, in my seminary days because there were lots of people, lots of guys around and great city to walk around. Now mostly I go for walks with my dogs, <laughs> be that as it may. But anyway, I meet people on the walks and that's fun. Uh, we go for walks and, and while, we, while we're going for the walks, we, we get some talks. We usually talk a little bit, don't have to talk all the time. Most of us, uh, it's an occupational hazard with me, uh, we tend to talk a lot, but I think in, in walking, uh, it's probably more important that we listen. And so with, when we walk with the Lord, get out whatever we need to say. But at some point, we need to just kind of, and try to listen to his response in our walks and in our talks. What do we do with family and friends? We eat and drink with them. We have a sacred meal here today as a reminder that eating and drinking with friends, family, believers, brothers and sisters is important. Now folks, you know <coughs> better than me, especially if you have children, you know how difficult it is to have a family meal, right? You know, one person, everybody gets up at different times, some people eat breakfast, some skip it, some, you know, shovel down some coffee and some donuts or whatever they, what you do for breakfast, and they run out the door. And then the kids are in school, uh, one or both spouses are at work, you don't see each other for lunch. And then for supper, what, right? Activities and sports and things you have to do and all the rest. And just, I, I just wonder, you might just count in your, count in your own head, <clears throat> how many, <coughs> excuse me, how many family meals would you say today the average family has together? You know, I remember, of course, I was the 50s, and it was a little different. But I remember as a kid, I don't know how we did this, really, but we went home for lunch every day yet. You know, we'd get home for lunch, and then we'd have supper virtually every night together, except my father was a traveling salesman, so he'd be gone three nights a week, which we never liked. But I, I would suggest that, that the, the idea of a, of a good dinner together and Go out if you want, but I, I think it's more fun, again, that's my opinion, to prepare it together, to enjoy it together, to clean up together. I think a lot of good things happen there. And I, I would suspect there's a lot of families where it's tough, maybe even on Sunday, to have something like that. That's why I like blizzards, by the way, because among other things, it's a good day to stay home and cook something fun and enjoy your family or a friend. Okay, what else can you do? Learn about his life. Learn about our Lord's life. Gospels, start there. But folks, I don't know if you got the references there in uh, the first reading, I think it was. Well, I've, I'm forgetting now, but you know what I mean. It talked about uh, Elijah and Elisha. And folks, you don't have to read the whole Bible, but it's really helpful to understand who Jesus was, the purpose of his life, the meaning of what he said, to have good background in the Old Testament, the story of salvation, Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophets, David, Solomon, the kings, Ruth, so many others. Because, and I use the example in Belle Plain uh, of a jigsaw puzzle. We used to do this at Christmas when we were kids and we had that nice time off from school. We'd get a thousand pieces, sometimes we'd do two of them, if we got bored, I suppose. and. Uh, now the first thing you do with a, a jigsaw puzzle or the border, right? Not super hard, okay. Now what's the hardest part of a jigsaw puzzle? The blue sky, right? <laughs> Horrible. If you really wanna 
punish someone, give, give them a horrible jigsaw puzzle that's impossible to, to put the picture together. But as you know, folks, after a while, and that's why, that's why really, you know, salvation history, Old Testament, knowing something about it, after a while you get most of the picture together and you don't have so many pieces and all of a sudden it starts to get easy. And I remember what we would do is somebody would hide a piece so they could be the one to put the last piece in, you know, if you ever do that. Anyway, uh, it starts to come together, folks. And, and like what we heard today, uh, I think it was in the gospel, you know, about what happened to Naaman and that, that woman. It's, it says so much. And I can't, to, I can't totally explain it to you. I'm not trying to talk down to you, but Scripture comes alive. It just comes alive. And you talk to our, our, our brothers and sisters, you know, as, as Catholics, we tend not to focus on Scripture so much. The church got, got nervous about it because all oh, the other people that are not Catholic are looking at their Bibles. Well, we need to look at our Bibles, too. And we need to know salvation history so we can understand the power of Jesus. Well, that's all I'm going to say there. I could say some more, but I've said enough. Uh, what life is about, folks, is not the selfie, knowing myself. The, what life is about is knowing myself and God knowing Jesus and how each of us is called, each in our own way, to be the mercy of Christ, the face of Christ in our life, wherever God has planted us. Not to underestimate the good that we can do when we feel we don't have any marvelous gifts, okay? Never to underestimate the good that we can do. Because I assure you, I assure you, there's, there's more good out there, I think, sometimes than we might see if our lives are too busy or we get too wrapped up with the selfie, okay, whatever it might be. Okay, anyway, uh, Tuesday, um, the kids are praying for a blizzard. So if, if they have a blizzard, then make sure you take a nice selfie of yourself in the snow. And, <laughs> and there's other things we'll talk about later, okay. Thanks for listening today. Let's rise and renew our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Knowing that the Lord walks with us, we strive to walk in his presence. We give our needs to him now. That the church become more like, more Christ-like each day through the renewal of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That public servants may put the welfare of people above political gain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the hungry, those without employment, the oppressed, the refugees without homes, might find the warmth of a home by the help of believers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians might continue to work for the protection of all life, especially for those yet to be born, the handicapped and the aged. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the words and actions of our families and faith communities declare Jesus as Lord of heaven and earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the cold and for the safety of those who help us by clearing our roads, fixing our furnaces, and reaching out to those who are shut in during winter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, including Stanley Novotny, and beloved family, members, and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have given us your Son to show us the way. Receive these needs, placed in that faith and with hope before you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mark, Carol, and Miles Smolik 
We'll bring the gifts to the altar this morning. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 433, O God, You Search Me. Transform them into the sacrament of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave to us life eternal. And so, with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 
I'll use the third prayer today just for a change. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased, to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion Merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world 
all that is good. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. We reach out and share God's peace with someone nearby. Yeah. Patty was stepping on the cord and it was pulled so tight it about yanked it down. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 330, This Bread That We Share. This bread that we share is the body of Christ. This cup of blessing is blood. We who come to this table bring all.
Good morning. Good morning. Those of you that don't know who we are, we're Chris and Jim Collins, and we just had a couple of things we wanted to, to uh, share with you that are up and coming, uh, an opportunity for giving and an opportunity to receive. And first, I'm going to talk about the opportunity to give. And this morning, after Mass, we're going to work on a little project, a little service project, if you might. And we're going to start placing these mercy, the year of mercy prayer that we're going to start using at Masses. And we're going to put these on the back of the hymnals. So if we can get a dozen volunteers to help after Mass, we're going to set up a couple stations and we're going to put these on real quick after Mass and then they'll be made available for us every Mass. Another opportunity that I want to talk about is the CEWs that are coming up, the Christian Experience Weekends. The men's and the women's are coming up in a couple weeks and I'm going to let Chris speak about the women's weekend first and give you some dates. Because we don't want Jim at that one. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to ever do a Christian Experience Weekend, I really encourage you to. In fact, I'd even like to challenge Jim that I have more friends here that are willing and maybe interested in doing this deal than he might. So we'll have a little contest to see who can get more people recruited for this weekend. Coming up in February um, is the weekend for women. Uh, it's the weekend of the 19th of February. And if you've not done an experience weekend, it's a time. Um, I was invited about four different times before I finally said yes. I just thought I was too busy. There was too many things going on with the kids. I just couldn't get away. Um, and I had a lot of excuses. Uh, finally, I just said I just need to do it. And, I, and that's what everybody told me. And I did. And I was so glad I did. This is the time of the year when you're thinking to yourself, I need a little getaway. I'd like to retreat from everything in the world. and retreat from the noise and retreat from the winter. Um, and Pilgrim Heights is a great location for this weekend. And for us, we're lucky at St. Pat's, it's just down the road. Other people come from a lot further away to these weekends. And for us, um, it's lucky we have it so close. But it's just a time in the weekend where you can discover and develop insights, answer questions you might have inside of yourself about your life, about your faith, um, what it means to be a follower. Um, it's a way to nourish yourself as an individual. It's a way to be a part of a bigger community with Christ. Um, and they have great food, and it's got a great um, scene out there. Uh, if you've ever been to Pilgrim Heights, the, the, retreat, the retreat house is an awesome place to spend a weekend. So I invite women to do that with me uh, February 19th, and I'll have some flyers in the back. I'll let Jim talk to the guys about the other weekend. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't bring my glasses and I can't see the men's date, but the men's weekend is the next weekend. I think it's the 26th, she said. Uh, anyway, guys, um, I tell you what, this is a great opportunity um, to just slow down. It's a great time of year. We're not harvesting or we're not planting or we're not doing anything. So this is a really good time during Lent to really maybe refocus yourself and it's for anybody age 18 and older. And I really would like to challenge couples. Um, the year that Chris and I went to our first CEW, we did the same year. So it was a great experience for us. And, and I would like you to consider maybe doing that as a couple. Or it, you, if you don't, you can certainly do it um, on your own. So it's just a great experience. And it, this is a, a great location, like Chris said. It doesn't get, this is a great opportunity and it doesn't get any closer to our home parish than right here. And so I just think it's a really good opportunity and I'd really invite you to come and, and be with us there. So we'll be back in the back with some handouts. So if you want to register, you, we'll have all that information. Thank you. I forgot, <clears throat> I forgot a lot of things this morning, so if I forget the announcements, make sure I don't forget. Uh, now, Tuesday does look like a snow day, possibly blizzard day. 
The uh, CCW ladies are not going to meet Tuesday afternoon because they're concerned about that. And they had their they did their quilting this this week, so they or that was it last week. I'm really getting mixed up. Uh, let's see. Also, cluster council. I did talk to one. If they cancel school or school gets out early, we'll we'll move the cluster council meeting. We'll postpone it for some other time. The kids are all praying for a snow day, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, let's see. I should mention this. Uh, someone I did not know this. I did not advert to it, but Father Tom Brack, whom you know, is celebrating his 57th anniversary as a priest today. That's, anyone know the time frame? Two o'clock. Oh, thanks, thanks. I thought somebody might know it. At St. Henry's, where he was pastor for 13 years. So if you happen to go to Marshalltown, stop by St. Henry's and wish him well. Uh, it's a good day to do it because, uh, believe it or not, tomorrow is a new month, February 1st, and he's going to have his uh, hip, his other hip worked on. He had one done 15 years ago, and he's going to have his other hip worked on. So uh, I'm not sure where he's going to have that done, but just pray that it all goes well. And if you see him today, you could say, uh, hip, hip, hooray, right? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tuesday... Besides maybe snow, it's the Feast of the Presentation of Jesus in the Temple. And for some, it's, it's known as a Groundhog Day, so you can do what you want with that. And then Wednesday is the Feast of St. Blaise, uh, Bishop and Martyr, and it falls on a, on a religious ed day. I'm pretty sure we're going to have religious ed. I hope we don't have too much snow. But anyway, here's the plan. Uh, we'll do the Blessing of Throats. Joe's going to do it over here, and I'll do it over here. We'll offer it after the, the morning mass at 8 o'clock. Actually, if you stop by and I'm around, I'll be happy to do it. But otherwise, we'll offer it during religious ed, Wednesday night, 6.45 to 8. So if you come anytime, come early. I'm around. Uh, I'll, I'll be over here probably in church, and we'll do the blessing of throats if you'd like to receive that. Okay, so it just happens to fall on an RE day. So we're going to do all the kids, all the kids, and anyone that might, might want the blessing. Okay, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Anyone think of any? No? Okay, let's pray in Thanksgiving. <clears throat> Nourished. By your saving gifts, O oh Lord, we pray that through this help to our salvation, true faith and true hope may ever increase, and that we might live in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you and yours. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our parting song is number 426, Blessed Be the Lord. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. The God of Too far.